hey <laughs> we're alive man we're alive this is absolutely hey. crazy uh right yeah right hey what's what's going on this isn't monday wednesday or friday this is thursday and it's you, thursday you're not dave or aj <laughs> No, no, no. I, I got to put my wool cap on, though. I, I, it's a little too warm. AJ's got me beat on that. I think now that I cut all my hair off, no more wool caps or baseball caps. I barely even wear my poor uh, senpai hat from Persona 3. It's the only collectible item I've ever opened and taken out of oh, no the way. collector editions was my senpai hat. Yeah, it's right there. This is the stuff you've been missing, guys. This is the stuff. Yes. This is why we get the king of all kings back. This is Made in Dreams, where we come to you live every single Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern and showcase a dreams creation that we think you should be playing. Uh, my name is Brian Paul, and sitting all the way across from the city, me, the city, this week and every week, he's the king of all VR kings, the Sofa King himself. It's Jeremy King. Hey, and sitting all the way over there, I could ride the heat waves to you, Brian, like a friggin' heat wave surfer, yeah. is <laughs> Brian Paul. Yeah, and uh, guys, one of the biggest critiques we keep hearing about Media Molecules Dreams is that it's hard to find new things to play. They're like, oh, you know, it's like it's a nightmare going through dream surfing and trying to find. So we're going to try to alleviate some of that stress and uh, and, and bring you uh, a game that we think you should be playing each and every week. Jeremy, what game did we decide to play this week? We did A Puzzle in Time. Uh, a Puzzle in Time by... <laughs> Agassi or Agassi? 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 John Wayne Agassi. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't there a serial killer or was one? I I mean, there's still many of them out this, there, but... This is him. G Gacy. It's he, him. He makes... He turned, makes over, some... turned over a new leaf yeah. in life, and he's like, instead right? of killing motherfuckers, we're, we're going to make games. Whatever the inspiration came from, he, he put it into something good. Right. VR goodness. Shout out to Donatello dreaming about PSVR 2 Game Cat with the $10 tips. Says, welcome back, Jeremy. Yeah, dude, welcome yes, back. Yes, thank you. I, I mean, I'll, I'll type everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm one of these typers, and my keyboard is like, this thing was bought for me. Uh, I want to say this thing is maybe 15, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, like, I, I think launch vanilla wow, this thing was already... A year old so you'll hear me type but it won't be that fast it'll be like click click yeah click, feel, click. feel free to just say, speak your response to people in the chat jeremy's jeremy hasn't been on a whole lot of live shows here without parole so like we're gonna get him yeah. acclimated and get him used to like just you know talking to the chat uh because it used to just be me and him in a room then it was me and him on webcams uh and so now it's uh now it's live and we're gonna do this yeah. all the time also a shout out to nihilist ryan the game feline with the five dollar tip says Rail. omg 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 it's jeremy <laughs> the fan with a nice little back. red heart oh right. vanilla wow did rock mr aj it was uh awesome and then they uh, i used to warlock warlock is what i used to play as what are we talking about i, what, what, I totally missed what's world happening of warcraft oh, world of warcraft yeah, yeah. You, you know i never played a single second of that game no never i was more of an eq2 fan that's where i really sunk my soul was everquest 2 Ever yeah. but we're here to talk about a vr game right yeah, dude. So, uh, a puzzle in time by John Wayne Agassi. Maybe we should stop make referencing. Yeah, yeah, course. yeah. Really, uh, sure, I kill it. Agassi, uh, he, who apparently uh, I, I knew nothing about him ahead of this. I didn't know that this game existed. I, I think it's got a pretty good reputation. But he also made another game in Dreams called Into the Unknown. It sounds like there's some similarities between the two. Uh, and yeah. but previous to all of this, he made stuff in a little big planet. So uh, he's he's sort of got yeah. a reputation for uh, being you know, a UGC kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so what kind of game now, is... Uh, oh, yeah, no. Let's do this. Catch me up. I'm such an old fart. UGC. User-generated content? Creation content? I don't know. I Something. Would, uh, sounds good. All right. I, I try not to think up. too hard about anything, Jeremy. So right. that's probably incorrect, and we're just going to run with it. It sounds good. I'll yeah. go with it. All right, cool. What kind of game is a puzzle in time? God, it's a puzzle game. It's like, a, I, I guess, an escape room. It's, I mean, yeah, I guess it would be pretty much the pure definition of escape room, actually. So, yeah, puzzle escape room type game. Yeah. With a, with a portal type of uh, uh, aesthetic to it. It does. It does. Yeah. It has a kind of like minimalistic portal vibe, right? Yeah, very minimal. Yeah. I don't, did you feel like it had, did, there wasn't like a whole lot of humor here? Was I missing anything? There, there's no, I don't think there's any humor in the game. Portal, I feel no. like, is like sort of renowned for humor. 
Oh, wicked. Yeah. Uh, like the biggest amount of humor is you go in there and it's like, oh, step through and experience time travel. And then it's instantly like over. And it's like, oh, rate your time travel experience. And I, of course, I was like one and out of three because it has your rate your time travel thing. Yeah. So I, I thought, yeah, all right, that was kind of funny. You know, but that was it. After that, it was just no humor. It was like all to it. Get to your uh, your puzzle and escape room. So yeah. no, there, not much humor, not much dialogue, very little. I felt like I was doing something wrong for the first 10 minutes. I got to be honest. Like, right. it's like, it was like, rate your experience. Do this, do that. And I was like, I'm like, I'm just kind of being random here. And, and I think, I think uh, when all said and done, I think that's what you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to just be like, well, I'm just going to kind of go through the motions and select random things. And because when they first put you in the room, uh, they, they say, hey, this, this experiment's going to take you four years. This puzzle experiment's going to take you four years. And I'm like, I don't have that much time. We're starting the yeah. show in like an hour. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so you, you walk into a room, and there's like very little going on. You can like, you decide like which of three types of trees you want to plant, and mm -hmm. that's sort of it. Uh, and then, uh, and there's like not a whole lot happening in the room. There's almost nothing in the room at all. Uh, yeah. And so, but then you find out that you can actually uh, time travel. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think by holding R2 down, it brings up a menu that says, uh, what year do you want to travel to and starts you off in yeah. year zero. And then you can select zero between through four. Exactly. So you actually, so technically five, right? T five different time mm -hmm. zones uh, to travel through. And it's the exact same room, just one year advanced. Uh, and it, I'll tell you, man, like, again, 10 minutes of me just being like, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing right now. Like, how long did it what take you to grasp the concept of, of what to do? So first, you know, I, I love puzzle games. I, I love them, but they, there's like one or two type of instances that happen to me the second I start a puzzle game. Mm -hmm. So I go in and immediately it's like, all right, you kind of assess the situation. All right. There's this, you start flipping shit. You hit this to read that you hit this to read this. And then you start to be like, yeah, fuck this shit. It's like saying you're hungry. And then someone hands you a live chicken. You're like, no, just give me a chicken sandwich. I want a game here. You know what I mean? It's like the same thing. It's like, well, there's a game contained within the fact that you got to kill this thing, gut it, pluck it, prepare and consume. That's the game, you know? And so I, I sit there, I go in and uh, immediately I'm like, yeah, fuck this. I'm going to give this another two minutes. And then I'm going to tell Brian, <laughs> let's choose another one. Right. And then so I start exploring around and then once I did the first puzzle, the very first one, brrr, it was like dominoes. The rest, it was just like, all right, then this, and then that, then that, then that. And I think, um, cause you messaged me about, hey, how long did it take you? Yeah. And I'm telling you, and the only reason I know this is because there was a 30 minute timer set on for something with my kids. Hey, tornado. The real star of the show just arrived. Yeah. yeah. So there was 30 seconds something with my kid. I mean, 30 minute timer with my kids going on. I started, Maybe when there was still 20 minutes left on the timer. So I, it took me 18 minutes, I would say, to complete wow. the game. Wow. About seven minutes of me just being like, I am not playing this. What is going <laughs> on? I'm done. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, here we go. And then it all just cascaded from there. So, yeah. Twitch of the single player game cat in the chat says, I played this game. I don't remember the chicken plucking part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, you got to go through one of the invisible doors to get to the chicken plucking part. 32 minutes from start to finish, it took me. <laughs> not, yeah, that's not bad. Not going to lie. And, uh, and, there was, and there were a couple points where I was like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I was just jumping between time zones, time zones, uh, time periods. Is saying I have no idea what I'm supposed to do next, and actually it was one of the first puzzles where uh, the it kind of sets you up in it's like this machine that's sitting there, and it's got four shapes and you can turn them. And yeah. Like, and I was like, I, I I don't know, man. Like I just turned them to some random things, and nothing happened, and I and I was like, well, maybe I don't know what to do with this one yet, and I just mm -hmm. didn't know that that is actually where I was supposed to be focusing my attention to. They kind of give you things to play with each time period allows you to mess with like kind of one other puzzle yeah which is kind of good that in, in the game even tells you when you click the uh triangle to look at the puzzle um mm -hmm. it says you can only mess with this in year one or year zero yeah or year four and thank god because right i feel like this is the kind of game that needs to kind of nudge you in the right direction and say well if you want to mess with this at least you can just look at it and you know what year to jump to otherwise you just be yeah. jumping back and forth being like wait when can i play with this 
Um, yeah. So just and the I whole think time just enough guidance. It. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it it absolutely was just enough guidance. And the whole tree thing, I'm not giving anything away, but I'm like, what the fuck am I doing with the tree? What is the goal of this? And then it was clearly obvious as you saw it growing what it was meant to do. It was just another simple puzzle, you know, part of it. That one wasn't that challenging, but they all feed off of each other and they all totally are in different time periods. So, you know, you do these things, then you go to this year and you can do this thing, yeah. but you can't do that stuff. And then once this progresses, you got to go back to a certain year to instigate these changes. So I thought that it definitely honed you in on all of that stuff pretty well. You know, it did a decent job because there's not much you can go. You're in a sim uh, single room, you know? And I, I love how over time, some of the puzzles would fail. Like you could open a, a window to look into a room for year zero, one and two, but mm -hmm. then at year three and four, it was like rusted shot or something happened and it can't open. Same with your like portal dude there, the ball, um, Tim E or tech E. I forget what the name of that dude was with the camera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to give spoilers away to solve the puzzles but i also do but i won't well i mean in all fairness there's a video playing right now with me solving puzzles oh so, really so i mean yeah. you know uh we, we don't have to get into like what the specific uh answers are to some of these things but if we can be vague as possible then that would be great but mm -hmm. uh but yeah no i mean there's so uh, one of the things that's done me and everybody cover your ears if you, if you didn't uh if you haven't played this one yet this is the, at the very beginning, I was telling you guys, you pick which tree you want to plant. And then when you jump from time period to time period, the plant, the, the tree is bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually hits the ceiling. Um, yeah. At no point was I like, well, maybe there shouldn't be a tree there. <laughs> like that stopped me <laughs> for probably five minutes. And I was just like, yeah. So uh, and, and I feel like that's really smart, you know, because I, I don't I don't know how many people would just be like, well, you know, let's decide which tree to plant. And but at no point say, well, maybe we shouldn't plant a tree. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like the puzzles in this game are very, very smart. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. I, I thought they were very creative, and they gave you just enough challenge to not rage quit, you know, Yeah. and say, fuck it, you know. And that's a, a good thing in a sense because when it was over, I wanted more, you know. I was like, oh, yes. I, I would have liked to have done more of this, you know, but it was just – it was short and sweet and perfect – for a dreams creation to jump in and play this i mean like this is a game that you could easily pay 3.99 4.99 and be like yeah i paid it you know is it worth it i don't know but i had a good time you know it's i, I would have paid a few dollars for this game and not have been too pissed off <laughs> you know what i mean that should be our rating scale for this thing be like yeah. you know, should you play it yes would you pay for it yes okay um yeah, yeah I've, I've certainly paid a back in just a second All right, we should be back. Uh, it doesn't matter which show we're doing it without parole. Uh, they all crash eventually. Yeah. Um, so uh, now here come the police for and the wreckage. And the sirens on my end. That per perfect timing. Mm. Thank you very much, Worcester Police. Uh, okay, so um, dude, we should we should probably like go through the typical like uh, games games spot. No, game pro. We should go through like, we should go through the game pro stuff. Uh, we, let's talk about each individual aspect of this game. And like, what do we think of the graphics? Pretty. Uh, pretty good you know actually you know it's funny yeah the only portion of this game that reminded me it was a dreams game was the the floofy fuzz growing on the trees mm. you know and the plants in the corners because it had that you know fuzzy look to it um and yeah. other than that like i i kind of forgot it was a dreams game because it it, it kind of goes against all those other creations i've played where they they utilize i i don't know i'm not a creator um but they all seem to utilize a lot of that fuzzy aesthetic that that look to it this is, it must be a tool that's pretty easy almost like a spray paint or something yeah but this was all was solid like candy yeah yeah and this wasn't and and i liked how all the 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 tiles came into place you know what i mean and it was so basic in that regard but um the portal aesthetic to everything without it ripping off portal at all like it had nothing to do with any of that but just had that kind of a look to it and uh i thought it looked solid for a, a free creations dreams game i i i thought it was a was pretty good 
Yeah, it's funny that you say that because my very first note on this game uh, in my little Word document here is uh, that it doesn't it doesn't feel or look like a Dreams game. Uh, usually mm -hmm. when you play a Dreams game, not only does it have, you know, a lot of them. I don't want to speak for every single game out there because we've certainly seen a lot that don't look at all like a Dreams game. But this one, yeah. All, all the objects are very, very solid. Doesn't look like it. There's no, um, there's no jump button, and the, and there's something about the yeah. jump in dreams, like the default logic that that makes that they all feel the same. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like, and even running around and stuff, it, not, none of it felt like a dreams game. And like I, at a certain point, I kind of felt I'd forgotten that I was in a dreams game. I know I wasn't playing it for very long, um, but it was just like the feeling that I got. I was like, oh, I'm just playing a playing a game. Um, yeah. And that's that's good, man, because the last thing you want to ha you don't want your game to feel like the thing that it was made in. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Sign of success. It's like my dad being when it was, you know, I used to be a dental technician making partials and dentures. And my dad used to say, if you can tell somebody's wearing a partial, a denture, a crown, then the technician failed. Yeah. So it's like this, you know, you jump into one of these games. If you can tell you're playing a creation within a game, mm -hmm. then I mean like, all right, you know, but when you can get in there and you forget you're in a game within a game, it's a, it's a win. Yeah. So that definitely a, a bonus. Now I felt like the voiceovers were like, uh, were interesting, right? Because they were solid. They were just reading the text on the screen, but it didn't sound cheesy. It didn't sound like some guy in his bedroom recording voiceovers. It sounded. Yeah, yeah. It, it had it had a nice style to it, but it wasn't like you know, it it wasn't it wasn't super professional and it wasn't super, uh, you know, average or anything like that. It just it, it totally fit the the feel of the game. Oh, sorry. Snap who doesn't like puzzle games, but he did say Prince of Persia. And I, I, my game for this year is waiting for the goddamn remaster, whatever it is of Sands of Time, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Yeah, it's uh, always Snap who said, unless it's like Prince of Persia, where you literally have to solve puzzles to open new passages of the palace. I never understood the enjoyment of playing puzzle games, let alone making. Oh, wow. One. But uh yeah, yeah, Prince of Persia. I cannot wait. There's so there's so many bad puzzle games, and, and a lot of them are, a lot of them fail because they either don't like you gotta you gotta have like that right balance of holding the player's hand, uh, and yeah. but also making them feel like they figured it out on their own. Uh, mm -hmm. And and again, I think I think coming back to this is that's exactly what this thing does. It, it really kind of always kind of points you in the right direction. The second you figure out a puzzle and that you were trying to figure out. Uh, you go, oh, I should have I should have figured that out already. Like, I should have known yeah. the answer to that. And that's the best kind of puzzle game when it's like, oh, it was so obvious. Why didn't I know? Um, but it still took me 10 minutes to figure it out. I think this that I, that happened to me in this game multiple times. Yeah. Um, I do. I do want to say something about the, the music in this. OK, to, let me ask you, do you remember what the music was like in this when game? You, so when you just said, I want to ask oh. or talk about the music immediate, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Was there music? Did I have that off or right. something? I don't recall music. You know, the the dialogue was very minimal. There was barely sound effects. Um, and that didn't deter me or take away anything from my experience while playing it. So I don't know if that weighs heavily on how good the puzzles were and the aesthetics were that I wasn't thinking about lack of sound or voice acting or yeah. music. Unless there was music and I missed it. Did, it, did I miss so I didn't, I didn't think of music the entire time. Like it didn't sound barren or anything while I was playing. It wasn't something that stood out to me. I was like, oh, this is just a quiet, empty room. But when I recorded this footage and looked back at it, there was this looping soundtrack that I was like, and, and, I, and I would skip ahead in the video and it was exactly the same the entire time. But somehow really? it didn't get repetitive to me and I didn't notice it and I didn't pick up on it. It was just sort of this background loop that was happening. And I didn't, again, did not notice that it was even playing until reviewing the footage right before the show. Uh, so I was like, that's interesting because it's very minimalistic. They didn't do very yeah. much, but also it wasn't annoying. Uh, and it yeah. just, and, and again, never, never felt like I was just in this empty, quiet room where like there was, mi there was a missing soundtrack. So it was there and it was effective, mm -hmm. but it, it, there wasn't much of it. So a weird balance that they managed to uh, achieve with that. It's another good thing, yeah. I think puzzle games, like as you know, who it's Snap who had said, um, I, I don't know their age, but it's I think certain types of game at certain times in your life, mm -hmm. it's kind of like Ween. You can't be like 40 years old and then somebody introduced Ween to you and you'd be like, Yeah, I, I love it. 
you have to love i feel like you gotta love ween when you're like a 15 and impressionable and then it sticks with you and you totally get it um where i think puzzle games are very much like ween or you know anything it's like i mean i'm old in my ways so first person shooters like call of duty uh -uh. you know i'm i'm too tired i like to sit down and grab my controller you know and yeah do this type of shit and then i fall asleep i wake up like, you know and and i made it 12 minutes into the game but it's been four hours and it's 2 a.m and i gotta go to bed um so that frantic looking around shooting somebody's in a window the sniper's camping eh, you know that's that's my snafu puzzle game type of thing so i, I think it's like one of those things you got to get in certain age like rpgs to turn-based um if you like that frantic type of stuff and you're setting your ways and you're in your late thirties, forties, whatever it is. And somebody shows you're a, 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 you know, an RPG. You're like, what? I, I tell it to attack. I want to just shoot, you know? So I could totally get it, but it's got a, that right balance. You find that right puzzle game and all of a sudden it could be like, Oh shit. I want to play all of the puzzle games. And I think I started early with that with, you know, it was in that, that tweet you had sent out about the five games. It was uh, oh, yeah. the longest journey on PC. That was one. I, I don't know if it was my first puzzle game, but it's the very first one I ever remember loving. And I still remember it was sweaty as balls in the game. And it was sweaty as balls in real life when I was playing the game. And I don't know why it just summertime when I start sweating, I think of that fucking the longest journey. And I'm like, man, I want to go back and replay that game. Everyone in the but chat anyways, thought you were I, talking I, about weed when you said ween. Oh, well, we, we could talk about that, but yeah, that's any age. The mollusk, the mollusk in VR. Yes, Zach, that would be, that would be uh, true. Actually, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants was uh, inspired by uh, the Ween song Ocean Man, actually. The creators heard that, and there comes SpongeBob. I'm learning so much that I'm not going to remember after the show. <laughs> uh, I think Zach knows. Let's talk about let's talk about some constructive criticism. If uh, sure. if we had Agassi sitting here with us, um, mm -hmm. what what would we tell him to uh, to to maybe improve on what he's given us here? I think there was, if there was more of the game mm -hmm. or faster movement. I wanted to move faster, but I don't know why because I was in such a confined place. It, I didn't need fast movement to get around. And we're live again. This is never, this is never going to stop happening. Uh, we'll figure yeah. this out one of these days. Um, all right, we're in the middle of some constructive criticism. You're talking about uh, about being able to walk a, a little bit faster, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I don't know where it cut out. But yeah, moving around fast is unnecessary because you're in such just one room. But still, I, I don't know why I just wanted that option. But with having a faster movement and more game, because that's something else I would have liked is is yeah. more. Um, I think the frame rate would need to be improved because sometimes with quick movements, you get that like, Ugh. I mean, I didn't get a nauseous feeling at all, mm -hmm. but I can tell that it would have been there if I had more quick movement or more puzzle to solve. And I was in there longer than 18 minutes. Hmm. So, I, and I don't know if that was just my connection. Cause it gave me the alert. Actually, when I started the game, it was like, Oh, the frame rate is a little slow, so you need to go in your settings and check this or play it in cinematic mode. So I changed the settings and I jumped in and I'm like, these frame rates fine. Yeah. But I, I had that teeny bit of like slight dizzy feeling that Skyrim used to give me if I turned too quick. So I, I don't know if that was just a, um, the frame rate situation, something else, but I would say constructive criticism would be, I guess, maybe to improve frame rate. And I don't know if that's something they can do as a creator. I, I don't know how that works, but um, almost just more. That's another, is that a constructive criticism? More, I want more of the game. It is, absolutely. I don't, I don't even know if we're fucking live right now. I'm looking over at the YouTube studio and hold on a second. Hey, you know what? This is uh, what? the very first time, very first time we've done this show. The fact that it's yeah. the fact that it's up and running at all is pretty great. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's I let's recommended you unplug and plug it back in. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I hope that's not because we're not live. Uh, let's let's see what's happening over here on YouTube. 
We are live. Nihilus just... Yeah. And so did Donatello. Nice. Good, good, good. Good to hear, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, everything's crashing over here left and right. Like, not only did uh, OBS crash, but also uh, my web browser crashed with, uh, with, with the streaming stuff. So... Everything that can possibly go wrong is going wrong, but it's all right because that's what happens over here. Um, one of my constructive criticisms, man, is that um, and it, and this is super simple. I don't know how easy this is to correct. Uh, I would hold a button to do something, and if I like turn my head at all, if if the character was talking to me, and I and I, mo and I move the reticle on screen away from the character, <laughs> it would just stop. And so it would be nice yeah, yeah. if I could just like tap the button and have like and get the interaction or, uh, you know, because even like opening the sliding uh, window on, 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 the, on the door. Yeah. It's yeah. like if you if you turned your head away, it's just like so some of these interactions could be sort of spruced up and polished up a little bit. Um, but the opposite end of that is I, I think it was Twitcher in the chat talking about the vibration in this game saying like when when you switch time periods, you hold R2 to switch and it's like r2 like in yeah and this is one of the i mean there's been a lot of great stuff in a lot of dreams games but this is one of the first times that like vibration has stood out to me where yeah you know, just traveling from time period to time period which is very very quick you're able to go boom 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 boom, boom very quickly yeah. and it but and it feels good like the dual shock responds really really well it felt it feels good yeah. you know it's funny i was looking at this game through rose colored lenses right isn't that the old time expression uh, yeah yeah yeah. Rose, something like that ro rose tinted glasses yeah or I that one yeah something like no. that so i forgot but you're right um when you looked at something if you deviated the slightest it would be like all right you're done talking to me you know or you're done <laughs> right. interacting with me um there was those puzzles you know and the towards the end with the the blue beams we had to line them up and yeah. one would go up the other good so that I was like this looking back and forth, trying to get them to like line up and stuff. And it's like, if you deviated slightly, it's like, Mew. yeah, you know, and the other one's like, Mew. so yeah, I definitely improved something with that, but it wasn't enough to, uh, again, it wasn't enough to make me stop or even think about it in hindsight. Cause I forgot about that aspect of it until you brought it up. Yeah. So, I mean, it was good enough, but yes, it, that definitely could use improvements. I agree. Right. Good enough. Good enough. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd have very, very few complaints left if I, if that was taken care of and yeah, and 100% like this, it, it, I would love more episodes of this, a puzzle in time, you know, puzzle two, puzzle three, puzzle four, uh, because again, the whole thing kind of takes place in one room. It's sort of self-contained and then, you know, you get through it and you're like, okay, that felt like a complete experience. But like now, I want more rooms. Like, give me, give you know, let me volunteer for more experiments. Uh, yeah. Because this guy obviously knows what he's doing. He knows that he knows how to make a good puzzle. And uh, yeah. And and in the way that the way that it all connects to each other, and in the way that all the different years uh, work together, uh, he just he just seems like he knows what he's doing. So uh, so I'd like to see <laughs> what he does next, like what his next project is, if he could do more for this, something like that. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he. Um had help or thought of some of these puzzles with, you know, teammates. I, I don't know how the VR, you know, with the creation, if they have to list them or not, or if it's, if he just thought of it all on his own, but I'm uh, very, there is a chair. No, there is no chair in the room. There's in no chair list. in the room. No. Green water. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, so how are we going to rate this sucker? What do you think? Um, I don't know. What I mean, do you think? Should we, I think the fact is, is that like we're only going to be talking about games that we're trying to recommend games to all the cats out there. We're trying to make life easier. So we're not going to be bringing you guys games that like we don't think you should play at all. Uh, we're going yeah. to try to find some hidden gems. We're going to try to find some, you know, interesting, different type experiences on uh, when, when we're doing some dream surfing. Uh, so that way you guys don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Um, so we we obviously like it. Now the yeah. question is, is how do we rate it? Yeah. What is something like a one, two, three, one? where maybe it needs some work before it's uploaded to dreams again Two, it's perfect in dreams three i would pay money on the the playstation store yeah. for this all right oh. I, I i well three no but you get it backwards though because three was always the worst and one was the best oh yeah that's right yeah, it's, it's only been two and a half months man it's like <laughs> you already forgot uh well then dude i'm gonna tell you right now i think i think this is a one um i i would you know if this was a five dollar game uh, on, on the PlayStation Store, and yes, I think for five dollars you'd be like, man, I really hope there's more rooms coming. But the fact is, is like I have paid way more for way less, uh, and I and I think that the 
the vision is here big time. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that even though a few things could be ironed out, uh, I would absolutely, if I paid five bucks for this, I'd be like, hey, you know what? It's it's something everybody needs to check out. So if you already own Dreams, go fucking check it out. How about you? Yeah. Uh, I am with you. I am wicked. Nick, what's up? Yes, I'm, I'm very rusty. Everything's like, even my knee right now. I don't know what's going on. It's like, I keep trying to crack it. Um, but yes, I say this is a one. This is one of those games where I would pay money, but then, you know, if we were rating it, you know, a few months back and I paid money, I'd be like, ah, it should have been a dollar, you know, because I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm cheap, but I'm frugal. So I would definitely pay a few dollars for this title. I think it was solid. I enjoyed every moment of it, except for the first few seven minutes out of the 18, where I was like, ah, I don't want to do this, you know? And, and then once I did it, you know, I was like, glad I did it. So um, I thought the aesthetics looked great. I thought the controls worked decent. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they needed. And we're live again. Jeremy's going to finish his rating here before we crash again. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. When, when, when did it crash? Right when I told you we crashed. Dan, it is my fault. It is all we're on Zoom because of me, actually. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, we we yeah we're not doing anything the way we normally do it. But this the fact that the show is that the fact that we got this show started at six is sort of a, a minor miracle. Yeah, uh, my computer decided to not update Discord out of nowhere, and it's it even when I was booting up the computer, it's like, hey, you know, there's some files we need to check here because, I mean, this computer last time it it's old too. It's yeah. old like me. So, um, you know, it's working its kinks out. My kids will use Jer it. Jeremy, play. Jeremy, Jeremy. What? Finish up your rating before we crash again. <laughs> yes, we crash. <laughs> I say a one, solid one. This game I thought was awesome. Um, I totally would have paid a few dollars for this game unless I had to pay a few dollars for this game. Then I would have said, why am I paying for it? But right now I didn't have to pay for it, so I would pay for it. And I thought the puzzles were solid. They were just challenging enough mm -hmm. uh, to not have me get pissed off and quit. Um, I thought the aesthetics looked great. I don't care about the sound. Um, the sound obviously uh, didn't bother me, so therefore it's good. Um, and I just wanted more of it. So, yeah, a solid one for me. Nice. Solid one. All right, solid ones all around for our first episode of Made in Dreams. Uh, remember, guys, in... Uh, not in the chat, but in the comments underneath this video. Uh, if you've made a game that you think we should be playing and talking about on this show uh, every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, leave the name. Hey, even leave the uh, the indreams.me link, uh, and that'll make it easier for us to find and check out. Yeah. Uh, and, hey, maybe we'll talk about your game on next week's show. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it for the very first episode of Made in Dreams. My name is Brian Paul, and that's Jeremy King, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you guys. Thank you.